Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Aspen. Today we are here to start another reading vlog. A goal of mine for this year is to really target my existing physical TBR and to get as much of the books I own and haven't read yet read as I can by the end of the year. And so in an effort to help me tackle that, help me not get distracted by new things or my Kindle or whatever, I wanted to do a vlog where I basically have this jar that is full of all of my unread physical books and what we're gonna do is just pull a prompt and I have two options I either read it right now or I get rid of it and I unhaul the book because if I'm not willing to read it right now then it shouldn't be sitting on my shelf and counting towards an unread book. This is gonna be kind of like read it or unhaul it, whatever you wanna call it. That's what we're doing. We're gonna pull prompts. You're gonna see my raw reactions to the books that I pull because I do think that there are books on my shelves that I'm just really not interested in anymore, which is super unfortunate. We are gonna pull our first book out of here. I don't know how many we'll do, but this is all of my like I said, all of my unread physical books with the exception of probably like the new ones I've gotten since Christmas time because I think that I made this around Christmas time. I made this little jar. So any new books since then are not in here, but that's okay because those would be ones I'm like more excited about anyways. So I probably wouldn't want to unhaul any of those quite yet. Anyways, so I'm gonna stop explaining. We're gonna get into it. We're gonna pick the first book. I'm so scared. I've pulled from here a few times before to help me pick a read and it's like, it's very very nerve-wracking. Comfort me with apples. I've already read this. I got comfort me with apples, but I've already read that one. Look at me go, overachieving. So I guess we'll try again. They're also color-coded based on like genre, so that one was gray because it's horror. Uh-oh. Should I read the one that fell out? I'm gonna show you first. The Last Party. Okay, hold on. Okay, so that is The Last Party by Claire McIntosh. This is a thriller. It was a November 2022 book of the month pick. And I actually think this takes place, yeah, on New Year's Eve. I should have read this like around New Year's, but oh well. I do want to read this. So we are going to read this. We're not going to unhaul it because I am curious about it. I feel like I've heard mostly good things. It's kind of long for a thriller. It's a little over 400 pages. I think it follows a New Year's Eve party and one of the guests ends up dead by the end of it. This is gonna be our first read from the TBR jar. We're gonna get started on this tonight and I will let you know when I have some updates. Hello everyone, it's the next morning and I am just about to head to work for the day but I wanted to give an update on the last party before I go. Last night I got to chapter 20 which is page 155. I think it's about 40% through the book and I'm really enjoying it so far. Like I said yesterday, it's following like a New Year's Eve party where someone ends up dead, but to be a little bit more specific, we are following two detectives who are working the case. The party slash death takes place in a at a lake where like one half is in Wales and the other half is in England. So like the jurisdiction and stuff is a bit up in the air. So they're just kind of working together. The person who died was the owner of this little like lake resort that was just recently built. And we come to kind of gather the opinion that not many people liked him and he didn't really get along with anybody so the list of suspects is miles long and this is kind of one of those books where I feel like I need a chart or like one of those cork boards with all the red string because there are so many characters and so many like factors that go into what happened. It's a little bit overwhelming to try to keep track of like I wish I would have been writing things down from the beginning so I knew like who was who and who was doing this and that and it's like on top of potential suspects for the murder there's also people who are just doing really shady things that like 
maybe don't play in but maybe do but just in general like it's a lot of drama a lot of secrets being revealed but i'm really liking it so far i feel like it's keeping you guessing non-stop because of the fact that there's so many players involved in this you never really have time to sit and get too like bored or like it's not very static as far as like oh we're just following this one lead like there's so many things happening also i think one of our narrators i won't say which one but i think one of them is an unreliable narrator so it's also like second guessing everything that that perspective is telling you so i'm having a lot of fun with it so far i am really enjoying it i'm really excited to keep reading i ended up downloading the audio book from libby last night because i want to keep listening while I'm working today because I need to know what happens. I'm very invested. So those are my thoughts so far. Really liking it. This is kind of the fun part of doing little like challenges like this where you don't have a lot of control over what you read because sometimes you pick up things that have been on your shelf forever and you are really loving it and it's it feels even more validating than like loving a new book that you just bought. So I'm very happy that we're finally reading this. I'm gonna go to work now and then maybe listen to some more, but if not, hopefully finish it tonight because I have got to know what happens. So I will catch up with you all afterward. Hello, everybody. It is way later after work. I got home, took a shower, and now I'm gonna start making dinner. But while I do that, I wanted to update you on the last party because I finished it. I really enjoyed this book. I was so invested the whole time, like reading it physically and listening, like there was so much going on. And I felt like I never had a moment to like breathe, which was a good thing in this case. Like. It just kept me constantly guessing. Kind of like I mentioned this morning, there was just so much information and like so many people that were playing a role in what was going on that it made it like impossible really to like narrow down who was gonna be involved at the end, who was like the true suspect. There was just so much happening, so much drama. Like if you're a fan of rich people drama type stuff, this is kind of giving that because it's like all rich people who move into this little like development and that's where the death takes place. And it's really this like war between the new like rich people who moved in and like the people who already lived in this town. So it's so fun in that aspect, just like unpacking everybody's drama, but then like the actual mystery and who committed the murder that happened is also just so entertaining at the same time. And like I said, there's a million suspects. I personally did not guess a single one of the twists or answers to anything. There was a really big twist at one point that I did not see coming at all that actually had me like speechless for a second and then they kind of start to hint towards something else and I literally was like I don't think I have quite literally ever seen this happen in a book in my life is she really about to like go there so I was just baffled by that but yeah, I really enjoyed it. I don't really have any criticisms. I enjoyed both of our main characters. I enjoyed the story overall. I liked the twists. I thought they were really clever, especially just with all the different levels of drama and secrets that are being discovered. Like I had no idea who the culprit was gonna be. So I really liked how it all played out and just overall really enjoyed the book. So I think I'm gonna give it four stars. And yeah, I guess I don't have anything more expansive to say. It's not absolutely revolutionary as far as a thriller goes, but it's a really good time. I didn't guess any of the twists. I don't know what more I could really ask for. So yeah, I highly recommend. And you know, it feels really good to have read a book that's been on my shelves for a long time and to have really enjoyed it. So first book of this little challenge is completed. Once I finish making my dinner, we will draw the next book from the little jar. Okay, the wrap has been made, so it's time to pick the next book. The Bazaar of Bad Dreams. This is The Bazaar of Bad Dreams. It's a short story collection by Stephen King. It has a really cool cover. I'm actually excited for this. I prefer Stephen King's writing in short story format. 
so I'm excited to see how I feel about this. There's quite a few stories in here, which I'm happy about because I prefer when his stories are a little bit shorter. So this is going to be our next read. I will get into this later tonight. So far, I haven't pulled anything I'm seriously dreading, and I know that that moment will come at some point. I'm going to get into this one after I eat dinner, and I will catch up with you when I have thoughts. It's been like a little over a day since I've updated you. I didn't film anything yesterday. So it's now Wednesday. I just got home from the office and I have a few updates. First, before we get into the book I'm reading, I got book mail today. Very exciting book mail. I ordered, thank you so much to the people who told me that you could still buy the original Magnolia Park series covers because I didn't think you could buy them anymore. So I had resigned myself to never owning these beautiful, beautiful covers, but some lovely people let me know that you can order them off Blackwell's and I got the whole series. They came today. They are so beautiful. So that's very exciting. I also have been making some progress on the Bazaar of Bad Dreams. I'm on page 305. I would say this is probably like 60-ish percent of the way through the book. I find short story collections a little bit like boring to vlog because I'm just not the, like I'm not going to go through every single short story and explain what it's about and everything. So I typically just kind of like give my overall feelings and then at the end tell you like my favorite and least favorite stories. So so as of right now, this is sitting at about a four star. Like I can't even give any kind of synopsis because every story is completely different from the next. There's no like running theme really throughout these. One thing I do really like is on the audiobook, there's a different narrator for every single story, which is kind of fun. One of the narrators is Edward Herman, who plays Richard Gilmore on Gilmore Girls. So I heard his voice and I was like, oh my God. Richard. But it's nice to have like different voices with every story. It's helping you kind of differentiate each one from the last. And also before each story, there's a little insert from Stephen King kind of explaining each of the stories, maybe where the ideas came from, just like various thoughts about his writing process. There's just like a lot of information behind these stories. It seems like a lot of these were like things that he wrote that just never got published. And so this collection is kind of a combination of a bunch of stories, some that he wrote a long time ago, some that are more current. It's been kind of fun even just getting his little insights on each of the stories beforehand. So overall, I am enjoying this so far. I don't know if I'll finish it tonight because the Love is Blind finale dropped today and I went on Instagram for like 0.5 seconds after getting home from work and saw three reels in a row with like spoilers for Love is Blind that I had to quickly dodge and get away from. So I need to watch that before I can do anything else. I have to watch that. I have to know what's going on, how it's going to end. I hate that we can't see the reunion for another week after this one, but that is priority number one for tonight is make dinner and watch Love is Blind. And then if I'm still awake, have some time, not gonna go to bed yet, I'll get back into this. But we have got to get the tea on the Love is Blind drama because this season is, I feel like every season I say it's the craziest season. It's the craziest season. Like this is so, some of the stuff, wild, absolutely wild. So I'm gonna go do that. And then we'll get into reading some more. Hello everybody, it's the next day and I'm here to give you a final update on The Bazaar of Bad Dreams. I did finish this last night and I think I'm gonna land on a 
3.5 rating for this because for the most part these stories were between three and four stars like almost all of them I ended up rating either three or four stars. I did have two five star stories in here, two favorites. The first one was called The Dune which is just following this guy who finds this like beach that has some seemingly magical powers. I really enjoyed that one. And then the other five star story I have is called Afterlife and this follows a man who dies and kind of like what happens after life. Um, I really enjoyed that one as well. Some of the other ones that I gave like four stars that I enjoyed quite a bit. Mile 81, which is the first story in this book, it follows a bunch of different people who end up at the same rest stop and they are being attacked by something. Batman and Robin have an altercation. This is like basically a story about road rage. That one was kind of funny. Obits, that story reminds me a lot of the manga series Death Note. If anybody's read that, if you like that, there's a story in here called Obits that's a very similar idea. I enjoyed that one. So I would say those were like my top of the collection that I really enjoyed. I did have two stories that I DNF'd in here because I got a few pages into them and I just was so uninterested. With a short story, if you can't grab my attention in the first few pages, it's not worth me finishing. It's not worth me reading. So the two that I DNF'd were Blockade Billy. This was a story about baseball. That's all the more I know about it because I got about three pages into it before I was like, yeah, that's not happening. And then the other one is called Drunken Fireworks. This is another one I don't even know what the full story is about because it starts out with this guy that's supposed to be being interviewed about some like event that has happened, but he just rambles on about completely ridiculous things for like three pages. And also the voice actor was doing this voice or it was just their voice, I don't know, but it was driving me nuts. I couldn't listen to it. So I did DNF those two, but aside from that, every other story in here I rated three or four stars. There were two poems in here that I just didn't rate because I don't feel competent enough to rate poetry. I don't even know if people do rate poetry. It doesn't click very well for me, so I don't like to put any any gauge on it. But yeah, overall, I did really enjoy this collection. Like I said, I think I'm gonna go with the 3.5. It could almost be even a 4. There weren't many in here that I didn't like, but I'm gonna sit with a 3.5 for now. I feel like that's about an average rating across all of the stories in here and then kind of counting for the two dnf stories as well. And now we can draw our third book. Okay. Oh, totally missed the camera. Oh, Such Sharp Teeth. Okay, so what I drew was Such Sharp Teeth by Rachel Harrison. I've heard really great things about this. I don't know a ton about it. It just says at the top, a young woman in need of a transformation finds herself in touch with the animal inside in this gripping, incisive novel from the author of Cackle and the Return. I'm really excited to read this because I've read two books from Rachel Harrison and I really enjoyed one and I really did not enjoy the other one, but I've heard pretty much only only amazing things about such sharp teeth. I've been really excited to read this. So the TBR jar is really working in my favor for this video. I really expected to pull a few out of there that I was going to be immediately like prepared to unhaul. So I cannot believe we're onto the third one that I absolutely want to read. I'm actually very excited to read this book. So I am going to literally go get started on this immediately and I will let you know when I have thoughts about it. Hello everybody. It has been quite a few days since I've updated you. I honestly thought about scrapping this vlog, but I really don't want to waste the effort that I put into the first two books, so we're gonna try to pick it back up and just finish out with this last book that I'm reading. I've just been having a really, really rough week. I'm just, I'm not gonna just like sit here and complain about it, but I have not been getting any sleep and it has been really affecting me mentally, but I feel like 
I'm not really coming around the corner. I still haven't really gotten any sleep, but I did take a nap earlier this afternoon, which is the most sleep I've gotten consecutively in the last like six days. But I have a few updates for you. First, I know I took a little bit of B-roll, like, so you guys saw that I went to Barnes & Noble which I know I also said in my last book haul that like I wasn't going to be buying a lot of books this year and I, like I was really trying to target my physical TBR which is still true just because I bought a couple books but my reason for going was because I had a gift card that's my excuse so I figured I'd do a little like mini haul of what I did get while I was there I just got three books the first one's not even adding to my physical TBR which is great because it's a book I've already read and I've been wanting to get a copy of How I'll Kill You by Ren Stefano. I read it from the library last year and I really enjoyed it. And then I saw the, the paperback version came out because I'll put up like what the hardcover version looks like. And when the paperback version came out, I couldn't believe it. I have never seen like such an incredible upgrade and it's so cute. So this is the paperback version. It has like this little box of chocolates. Some of them have skulls on them. The fingernails are painted with like the blood drips. This cover is just like maybe one of my favorite book covers I've actually ever seen and they had a copy at Barnes & Noble so I snatched that up right away. The hardcover copies and the paperback copies were in completely separate spots in like the thriller section on completely opposite ends of the section. So at first when I found the hardcovers, I didn't think they had this and I was super sad, but I, I'm glad I looked a little bit closer because I did find it. So I got this one. I'm obsessed with this cover. I love it so much. And then the other two books I got, the first one is No One Needs to Know by Lindsay Cameron. This is a Haley Wreck, of course. She talked about this in a few of her videos recently and she really loved it. I think it follows a society that has this app that's almost like a form of Yik Yak, if anybody is familiar with Yik Yak, like I know my high school had it. Bit traumatizing to be honest, but apparently they have something similar to that and it gets hacked and everybody's secrets start getting like exposed. So I've heard that this is just a lot of like juicy drama. It sounds really good to me. So I grabbed this one. And then the last book I grabbed, I wasn't expecting to get this book, but I've seen a few people talking about it recently and then when I saw the book and how like beautiful it was I decided to pick it up but it is A Fate Inked in Blood. This is the start of a new fantasy series and it sounds like this first book is following this girl who is in an arranged marriage and she ends up in a situation where she has to like fight to the death. I don't know much more than that but it does have sprayed edges and they're like sparkly and metallic which I thought was really pretty and like just the book overall is beautiful so I decided to pick up this one too and now we'll go back to trying not to buy any books but the gift card was burning a hole in my pocket. I had to make use of it. My other update I wanted to give is that I have made some progress on such sharp teeth mostly today. I went to Panera for some lunch and read a little bit there and then I've been reading a little bit since I woke up from my nap and I'm now on chapter six which is just under a hundred pages into the book so I think it's about a third of the way through. This book is a little over 300 pages and this book is following this girl who is going back to her hometown to stay with her twin sister. Are they twins? I think they're twins because she's pregnant and she's by herself. And while she's there, she ends up getting attacked one night in the woods. And then she starts having these side effects and she believes she is turning into a werewolf. That's kind of like the main part of the plot. There's a little bit of this like romance subplot going on. There's a little bit of mystery as far as what's going on with the sister. It seems like you know, her being alone is odd. She had like a boyfriend or a husband or something who just like left her and she doesn't really want to talk about it. So there's a lot, like there's a few different kind of plot lines going on throughout the book. So far I'm liking it. It's a bit slow, like not much has really happened in these first hundred pages. We're really just getting to know our characters 
and like the progression of like the were turning into a werewolf is happening pretty slowly. Not a whole lot going on quite yet, but I can see where some of the mysteries and where some of the plot elements are going to lead to, so I am excited to keep reading. I'm enjoying the main characters in this book a lot. That was my big thing with the one book from Rachel Harrison I've read that I didn't like is all of the characters drove me nuts. So it just led to me being frustrated, but in this book, I'm really liking the characters. Those are my updates for now. It's a little after five now, so I'm gonna make dinner in just a little bit here and I don't have anything else going on for the night. So honestly, I might finish this tonight. We'll see how tired I get, but for now my plan is just to make dinner and keep reading this book. So we'll let you know when I have more thoughts or maybe a final update, I'm not sure. Hello. It's been actually like a few weeks since I filmed that last clip. If I had to use like a book title to describe the current situation, it would be things have gotten worse since we last spoke. I have had a rough few weeks. I've had a lot of personal things going on that I've just been trying to get figured out. And so I kind of abandoned this vlog and was gonna just not even post it or do anything with it. And then I was like, I am like 95% of the way done with this video, basically. And as one of my favorite YouTubers used to say, we don't waste food and we don't waste content. So I decided to just like fully wrap this up. I'm still going to edit it and post it and it'll be fine. It's just been a while since I originally filmed this. I think that the last I updated, I was like 100-ish pages into Such Sharp Teeth. I have obviously finished it now. At the time that I last updated, I was saying that it was pretty just like not silly but like nothing too serious going on kind of just this situation of like her thinking she's turning into a werewolf really just nothing too crazy happening and almost immediately after i gave that update the book got much more serious this book touches very heavily on trauma and abuse and just like the long-lasting impacts of those things. It really dives deep into discussing what it's like to have a traumatic experience. Also, it talks a lot about what it's like to deal with other people's feelings about your trauma in a way. Like, they spend a lot of time talking about the ways that other people almost need to, like, desensitize or not desensitize, but, like, they find ways to almost make someone's trauma feel less serious because it's how they cope with not having like interfered in the situation, tried to make it better, not having known about it because you know, like they can't deal with their emotions and it's really frustrating as the person who experienced the thing to have other people kind of make what happened to you feel less significant in order to make themselves feel better about what has happened. So it definitely takes a more serious tone as you continue reading and I really enjoyed it. I overall really enjoyed the book. Once those trauma conversations started, they really started to kind of overshadow everything else, at least for me. This book also touches on some other really serious, important conversations. There's a lot of talk about like bodily autonomy and that kind of thing as well. So there's a lot to be kind of gleaned from this book and, and there's a lot that people could relate to and feel seen by. It's all told under this cover story of like this girl turning into a werewolf. It doesn't really like mask the seriousness, but it's like little reprieves here and there from the deep conversations that are happening. I ended up giving it four stars. It's not like a new all-time favorite for me necessarily, but I had a great time reading it. I really don't have any strong complaints or anything. It's just not, you know, an all-time favorite, but super glad I finally got to this one. Overall, happy I finally got to all three of the books we read in this video. I had to remind myself what I read for this video because it's been weeks for me, even though it's been zero seconds for you guys. All three of these books ended up being good, solid reads for me, two four stars, a 3.5, and just three more that I am getting off of my physical TBR. So 
I'm very pleased with how this video turned out. I didn't end up having to unhaul anything that I pulled out of my jar, which I really thought that I would, but I do think that I'll be doing an unhaul in the near future. I've just been kind of looking at my shelves. There's a few books that just annoy me that they're even on there because I either read them and didn't like them or I just know that I'm never going to read them because I bought them so long ago at this point. So there will probably be an unhaul coming at some point. Glad to have a few more books off the physical TBR. If you guys have any video ideas or any formats that you would like to see me tackle the rest of my physical TBR in, please let me know because I'm open to whatever helps me get through this list. So obviously whatever types of vlogs and videos you guys prefer to see, if it's the mood reading, I got a lot of positive feedback about the Instagram video, if you guys want another round of that, continue to do this just with my TBR jar. I'm open to whatever format people prefer so let me know if you have preferences but with that I'm going to end the vlog here and get this edited and posted for you. Thank you so much for watching and sticking with me. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye!